Yo, 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 it's your man, Shalagun Lafour. Today is a great day. Today I finally continue the darn Let's Paint series. It's been too long. I do want to put some more time into actually planning the final piece in here, and I'm gonna be going over that in a bit. The first thing I'll talk about is what I'll be working on here. My client today came to me with this idea. They have this old character drawing. They came to me asking to spice the design up in any way I want, change it to whatever I think would make for nice artwork and make it uh, do whatever I want in whatever environment. So basically great stuff. I can uh, be very, very free here. Not much restrictions. This will make for a nice episode. They said it's a small robot with these uh, butterfly wings on its back and different metals all over their body and this gave me this idea to go for a sort of a steampunk type of aesthetic and not full-on steampunk just influenced by it with these rusty metals and brownish tones and stuff spiced up with the darn wings the colorful af wings i decided to change the body to not be sort of humanoid the character appears to be sitting or something in the original piece in the sort of an emo position. <laughs> I also made the wings a bit less chaotic. I made the thing a bit more resemblant to an actual butterfly overall. What I came up with for the environment was this large obscure looking greenhouse with some weird plants and stuff inside of it that these um, robotic butterflies feed on just to have a bit more, you know, context a bit more narrative to go with the design i'm planning to go for this sort of a dome shaped greenhouse that has this wireframe looking thing coming down to highlight the shape i want to make the light coming from the background just punch through the the character's wings the butterfly wings and highlight a plant or a flower of some sort in the foreground i don't know what type of flower it will be yet but i'll explore that along the way i'm thinking of doing a comprehensive version of the piece before just a sketch where it's it's sort of the final painting the the positioning of everything is how it's supposed to be in the final piece but it's not the final piece i'll just uh, try everything i need to do out on this version of the drawing before i actually start the final painting yeah cool sick all right see you later boys to the welcome back uh, by the darn merch i mean hey guys i'm back uh, but please buy the merch so this is the progress so far i decided that i wouldn't actually go for the colorful light uh, coming through the wings of the character or the butterfly because it's actually quite a complex thing to do and for it to make sense it needs to be like a very direct light source what i have right here is ambient light it actually 
tried going for a nighttime shot before if you guys saw that was what that was i just wanted to make this idea work but i mean you, you don't always get what you want i think it will make for a cool piece even without it so what what's been up here basically i i tried to work out the design of the damn butterfly i noticed a bunch of stuff that i want to change here so i created a big change list there is a whole bunch of stuff i've talked about how i make notes for myself in the previous episodes i want to make a bit of changes to the body of the damn butterfly it cannot be overly complex it cannot have a lot of small details because it's supposed to be quite a tiny not a tiny just a small robot this is actually the first time i'm incorporating three point perspective into my pieces properly i've used two point and one point before this uh, three point perspective combined with uh, this circular shaped construction it's it's quite challenging let me tell you but let's not talk about the background what other changes do i want to make to this butterfly i want to make the design actually make sense i want these hydraulics and these mechanical parts to sort of work i want the joints to look functional if you know what i mean it's a steampunk style so of course it's gonna be made of sort of you know old school looking parts not very futuristic i haven't actually drawn a lot of mechanical stuff before so the, i think this is a good starting point i also want to change the pose a lot i'm gonna redraw the thing completely as i said i wanted to tackle these problems before i actually got to the final painting i want to rotate the the first half of the body the thorax basically i want to make its position more dynamic than it is this looks kind of stiff and awkward and i don't think this uh, showcases the wings so i'm just gonna work on that a bit just uh, some small design changes to the butterfly and uh, a reset in the position and then i'm ready to start working on the final canvas so yeah i'll just get back to work on this and i hope this will turn out cool and good Yo, 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 I have returned. I basically have the basis for the final canvas laid down now. I sent this back to Bonnie. That's my client, by the way. I don't think I mentioned their name before. They requested a couple of changes. Firstly, the wings are just a bit too far from the original. It was kind of a spiky, cool, edgy look, but I settled down to normal aft butterfly wings. So yeah, we're gonna change that. And uh, they pointed out that the body of the 
Butterfly is way too bulky and I agree actually now that I look at this. I'm gonna change it to something that's more suitable for flying I guess. So something more aerodynamic or slim. When I was planning the design of this butterfly I mostly focused on the side and the top but the angle I chose for the final piece is sort of from below because I wanted it to fit in with a sort of extreme perspective. I'm gonna have to refine the design a bit from the bottom of the character. I'm gonna have to slim the body down a bit and change the wings. But what's up with this background you ask? It looks very off and you didn't see me draw it. That's because I wasn't getting the geometry quite right. I just made a very basic uh, 3D model thing in Google SketchUp. I just matched it with the perspective I had going on before and I'll be painting it over later to make it look nice because it looks like ass right now. Another thing, this is sort of extreme perspective so to make this work you really need to make everything follow the perspective correctly. This is a very wide angle shot and it won't really feel right unless everything is placed correctly. I think these flowers, they look super stupid. They look ridiculous. <laughs> I think I'm going to bring them forward a bit closer to the camera to make the sense of scale make more sense. Right, one more thing. I'm going to change the lighting setup a bit because there isn't really anything going on here. I think I'm going to go for a little bit of a side light. Maybe it will be a end of the day sort of scenario here where the golden light comes from the side. I'm not sure about that entirely though because there is the specific feeling or emotion I want the viewer to feel when looking at this. I don't want it to be all cutesy bootsy like. I want it to be sort of more mysterious and epic and stuff. With the changes to the lighting and actually rendering stuff out and doing the chaotic wings and stuff, I think it will look a lot more like what I intended it to look like. So I'll get to work on this now. Very nice.
So what's been going on? Let's take a look. So I'm in, in a very interesting stage right now, I think. I worked out the background a bit to, to make the composition that I was thinking about from the beginning finally work. I wanted to split the image into two, basically. One half is these plants and the second half is the sky and the butterfly. You might have just uh, thought that, wow, you just took parts of photos and uh, called it a day. It's called uh, photo bashing. I I wouldn't normally do this, but it is a time saver. The thing is, my client didn't actually order a very detailed background. I'm just doing this on my own will. Drawing all of this out by hand would have taken way too much time. And I actually need to focus on drawing the butterfly, which I'm going to do next. So I just decided I should try out photo bashing. And I think it actually worked out better than I expected. Looks quite normal when combined with these completely hand-drawn flowers in front here. So that worked out better than I expected, which is dope and cool. So other changes that I haven't mentioned are the wings. I condensed the colors of the wings to purples and teals and stuff to basically match with the color scheme of the rest of the picture. I talked about it with Bonnie. They said it's okay, they like it this way, that the colors were a bit full on originally anyway, so it's all good. However, I think the angle of this wing is a bit off. It doesn't match with the perspective of the rest of the picture it just feels a little bit off to me this uh, pattern here it's sort of too simple I feel since the butterfly is supposed to be a main attraction of this piece I think I should make the wings a lot more fancy looking I should complexify the pattern the reason I chose this pattern was that I actually referenced this off of an actual butterfly in real life but this ain't supposed to be realistic so I think I'm going to change the direction of the to go upwards like this. I feel like that would look a lot nicer. Would also tie the bottom wing and the top wing together. Yeah, I'm also gonna do a thicker frame around the wings here and I'm going to work on the actual material of them, which is supposed to be like glass. Along with the colors of the wings, I decided to change the color of the damn flowers down here. They were red-ish originally. They're the species is, I think, Euphorbia millie or something like that. They're actually red, but I changed them to be purple because screw realism and I wanted the color scheme of the picture to be a bit more uniform. So I want to talk a little bit more about what's been going through my mind regarding composition so far. My idea was to have this big dome looking structure here. We're looking up at the thing and I wanted to basically place the butterfly right here in the middle of this ring to show that it's a focal point. All the prominent lines in this picture pointing right towards the butterfly. There's very intense perspective going on here. The vanishing points are quite close to each other. This one doesn't follow the perspective completely, but that was intentional. I wanted to point it towards the butterfly in a way that it wouldn't be perfectly lined up with 
the perspective guide as everything else here you can see that these two flowers are perfectly following the upper vanishing point here so are these plants here but not this one i talked a little bit about these line directions and the stuff in the last toasting your art episode when i was talking about how to make still scenes look more intense and stuff i tried to apply the same stuff over here basically but yeah the next big things for me are going to be rendering of the actual butterfly making the design look dope and uh, dope af then i'll do some more adjustments to the background and i'll be done with this it's been way too long i started this like a month ago already i did get sick for like a week and wasn't able to work on this but still though even so the time i'm taking with these is way too long so i'm going to have to really work on my working speed but yeah i guess i'll i'll just get to work so yeah see ya soon It is done. It is done. I just finished this sucker. Actually, I'm joking. I finished it yesterday. So here it is. Here's the final piece. It kind of is what I wanted it to be. So I'm pretty satisfied with it. A couple of parts where I could have done things differently, but couldn't because of time constraints. It feels great to finally have this behind my back. I actually wanted to have a little talk about the compositional side of things because everything is established now nothing is gonna change anymore I wanted the character to be clearly clearly the focal point of the picture I placed a lot of clouds behind there because it makes sense for there to be clouds in the sky and clouds are white so they generate contrast with a dark body like this and they provide a nice smooth backdrop for the wing to showcase all of it you look at the butterfly first right and then the circle simply leads you all eyes to the flowers here which are actually sort of low contrast compared to everything else it's uh, dark against light up here but like mid-tones against dark here i wanted the background to sort of give the piece a little bit more story but to still be a background the story isn't that important because there actually isn't one <laughs> that's the functionality of this environment in the context of this art piece you probably didn't see the clouds in the time lapse because i forgot to record that part the 
I did it at 4 a.m. at one night. I couldn't sleep, so I just tried to make a new sky and I just started it as a little bit of a photo bash and painted it over. By the way, if any of you is wondering where I get these photos, I acquired them from photobash.org. There's a lot of great packs there of different things. There's even a couple of free ones which you can hoard. I did that. Cool stuff. This isn't sponsored. I just like those resources. They're nice. So what happens in this piece is there's this atrium thing in the background, a small little butterfly and some flowers in the foreground. It was actually sort of tricky to shove those two into a building believable composition. One thing I could have done is I could have pushed the feeling of small scale by blurring out the background, making this sort of like a macro shot. But I thought of that too late. I had already rendered the background too much. I mentioned before that this is a, a sort of a wide angle shot, right? You can see a lot of angles at the same time. You can see the bottom plane here clearly, and then you can see the top planes of these flowers and these leaves. When you take a wide angle photo, the edges of the photo will get sort of stretched out. I simply put a lens correction filter on top of it in Photoshop. The feature is actually meant for photos, but I think it actually worked out really nicely in this scenario because that actually, let me show you. This is their normal version, what, what I had before, and this is with the lens distortion, but you can see how it really gives it that oomph effect. It just puts the cherry on top. I really like how the effect worked out for me here. It's nice. It really gives you that spice. I didn't even initially mean to put the vanishing points this close to each other, so that's interesting. This was a happy accident. It worked out in the end, so very nice, good and cool. If you would like a commission, then you can check out the info in the description. Email me at this email address. Yeah, this was a nice uh, learning experience for me. A lot of uh, things were learned. I learned to photo bash a bit better. I learned to use basic 3D tools. I made this in Google SketchUp, which is the simplest 3D tool ever. You can pick it up in like 30 minutes. Commission me, guys. Could, dude, please do it. Uh, it. There is a chance that you will be turned into one of these videos. Yeah, I, I guess I'm out now I'm going to slide away. My chair makes a lot of noises. Commission me so I can buy that gamer chair.